what is going on and welcome back to another video. Today's project is gonna be huge because I'm gonna undertake the dreaded subframe reinforcement on the E46 M3. Now, for those of you who do not know, the E46 M3s, especially in the years before 2004, had a really bad problem with the subframe mounting points cracking. So basically what causes the issue is the subframe bushings, you know, everything kind of flexes and that's what bushings are designed to do is kind of handle that flex. But eventually the amount of flex that gets put on the subframe mounting points is just too much and uh, things just start to tear and rip and it can get very bad. But thank goodness mine is not, not anywhere close to being that bad. So little cracks start to form and what people will do is put reinforcement plates on them. Uh, really smart people will buy M3s that don't have any subframe cracking whatsoever and then epoxy plates onto the mounting points. What's gonna happen though is I do have a crack that I know of. I'm gonna drop the entire subframe of the car. So all the suspension components, all the, uh, you know, the muffler, the fuel tank, everything basically get access to the points, the mounting points for the subframe. I'll be able to inspect each of those and then wherever there's a crack, I can weld it back together and I'm gonna be welding on reinforcement plates. Now, this entire process is actually sponsored by Turner Motorsports. Uh, they were kind enough to send me out their reinforcement plate kit that they sell for the E46 M3s. So here is the kit, uh, it comes with various plates. We'll be going over exactly where those go and what we're gonna do with them. Uh, there's some spacers or some bolts to hold each plate in for welding purposes, all kinds of stuff. Like I said, we'll go over that though when we get to that point. Now, while I'm in there, I'm also going to be adding these right here. So the subframe bushings, because they flex and that's what causes the problem, I'm going to be using some solid aluminum subframe bushings. These are from Turner Motorsports as well. So again, thank you. And I cannot wait to try these out. Now, one more thing I'm going to do while I'm in there is go ahead and <clears throat> replace the differential bushings. I got some PowerFlex bushings. People love these for their M3s. PowerFlex makes a uh, good product from what I've heard. So I'm going to try it out, see what I think. Now, before we get to all that fun stuff, I do have to remove the subframe out of the car. So what I'm gonna be doing is lifting the car up um, and then I'll go over with you guys exactly what needs to be taken off to be able to do this. So for what it's worth, this can be done on uh, jack stands. It's obviously it's harder. Um, so the lift here is just gonna make everything super convenient, but it can be done with some jack stands. I've seen people do it before on forums and everything. So uh, totally possible if you do not have access to a lift. All right, so here we are at the underside of the M3. So you've got your differential right here, and then you've got your subframe surrounding it, holding it in. The mounting points where we're gonna put the plates are right here. So you've got one on this side, one right here in the front, and then you've got two on the other side in the same position. Those are where the plates are gonna go. That's where the cracking happens. Uh, so that's what we need to reinforce. Now the hard part is getting to those points. So you'll notice if I pan down here a little bit, so you've got your exhaust section that goes underneath the subframe and differential, that has to be removed. There's a brace right there that needs to come down. Uh, so I actually need to put the car back down, get that brace off from the sides because it mounts underneath where the lift is right now. You got the fuel tank over here, which needs to drop. Now, once all of that stuff is out of the way, I can start taking the actual subframe out. And what that means is I'm actually going to drop it all out together and connected. Now, when I go to unbolt the subframe, what will happen is I'll drop the car down and put the wheels onto some wheel dollies. That way I can just wheel around the subframe um, and just set it off to the side until I'm ready to work with that specifically and change out those bushings and everything. First things first, I'm actually gonna remove the rear bumper just to make things slightly easier to get to the hangers for the muffler. And then, um, yeah, just start taking off parts. I've also gotta do that brace. So I'm gonna get to work and I'll let you guys see what happens.
right guys, well I finished removing all of the exhaust, uh, any heat shielding that was in the way, and then also I removed the drive shaft completely. So now it's really time to start taking down the subframe. There's things like uh, these uh, connectors here, then there's the brake wear sensor, the brake pad wear sensors on either side. There's another sensor over here that has to be unplugged. With these, the way these plugs work is there's a box attached to the side right next to the fuel tank. And basically what you do is you pull them out of that box and then they just separate. There's two clips on the side. This is actually pretty easy. Now, the only other things that aren't bolted to the car that I need to undo are the brake lines. So I have to drain the brake fluid out of those. And then the other thing is the handbrake cables. Removing the handbrake from the actual uh, rotor and everything, it's supposedly harder um, and you uh, risk damaging things. So what I'm actually going to do, these are the cables right here. This is where they go inside the cabin of the car. So they follow the trans tunnel and they go all the way up. Um, and then they bolt in somewhere around here. So what you're supposed to be able to do is take a like a flathead and then hammer the cable out after undoing them at the top. So that's the route I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start draining the brake fluid and then I'm gonna go through and uh, undo these at the top and then knock these lines out. Hopefully they'll come out without a hitch. So I drained the brake fluid out of the brake lines and disconnected them so they're still attached to the calipers but I've taken them out of the hard lines up here so that way I can just drop it down and these lines are still attached. These are loose so I pulled these out. Um, it's still really rigid here so I can't pull it all the way out so I'm going to go ahead and put wheel dollies under the wheels, lower the car and start taking the subframe bolts off, trailing arm bolts and then the entire thing. Oh, also the bolts for the... Uh, the two shocks, I've got to take those off. And then once I've done that, everything should drop, sit on the wheel dollies, and uh, be able to wheel it out. So that's the next job. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and break loose all the bolts, so that way when I get the car down, I can just pull it off. <laughs> So here it is, the subframe, everything that's connected to it, the cables for the e-brake or the handbrake, everything is out, drop down, and it's all, uh, it all moves really easily, especially on the wheel dollies and everything. So the last thing to remove is the fuel tank right here, along with the line that goes to the fuel fill door. So that comes all the way up here. So I'll remove this, come all the way down, and remove the tank. Uh, I've also got to unplug the sending unit um, from inside so that'll be easy because my rear seat is already out so I just got to reach it. As far as the mounting points you've got the first one here, here, and then you've got with the two studs and then there's those four. I actually forgot those four and it took me a while to realize that but uh, got all those pieces out so this is the one that has all the cracking and I will get closer to that so you guys can see but the other ones upon first inspection look okay which I'm very happy about. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and work on getting the fuel tank out. So I finally got the fuel tank out with some help and got all the fuel lines disconnected which took an extremely long time but it is finally done. Went ahead and drained the fuel out of that so it's fuel's not sitting in there and then I won't put that fuel back in. Over here you got the subframe so this is super easy to get to. I can get to the subframe bushings um, really easily. I'll remove the diff so I can do uh, the differential bushings so that'll be that'll be easy to take care of. I just got to clean it up. Over here so you can see the fuel tank is gone, which sat right underneath there. Um, you've got some of the lines up here I just kind of zip tied out of the way. This has got to get a really thorough cleaning before I can do any welding to it. 
Um, and I already found another crack I'll show you guys. Alright, so after figuring out the lighting situation, so you've got that crack right there, which is pretty gnarly. But I'll be able to take care of that. That one over there. That one seems to be fine. This is the other one that has the crack right along here. But all in all, that is going to do it for this episode. I uh, got everything off that I wanted to, so next episode I'll be able to clean everything up. I've got to do a lot of practice on welding. That way I feel confident that I can weld the plates in. But uh, yeah, a lot of progress made. Some odds and ends that I need to pick up. Uh, like I got to get a new flex disc. Um, that's ordered. I've got to actually damage the fuel filler line, the initial hose that goes in. It was kind of brittle and old anyways, so it needed to be replaced, but I got to get one of those. So a lot of things that are uh, going to be new and going to be nice for the for the M3 needs it. It needs some love. But uh, but yeah, so that's going to do it. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Uh, make sure you guys follow my Instagram. That way you guys can see uh, the latest updates, what's going on. By the way, I um, forgot to mention this, but if you guys uh, do have an M3 or you're thinking about getting an M3 and you're thinking about doing the service, whatever it is, and if you guys have any questions about specifics that I did not show, make sure you guys leave a comment down here below and ask me questions, and then that way I can answer them in the next video or in the video following that. That way I can help you guys out if you're ever doing it because there's just a little odds and ends I know I didn't show, and uh, I can probably show those in another video to help you guys out if you guys need it. One thing I also want to mention is I've had the garage door up and down throughout this process, but when I've had the garage door closed, this AC unit from New Air Appliances has been super helpful and really kept the temperatures in the garage nice and low so it's comfortable and it's just, it's just much easier to work in. So don't forget that you guys can use the code KYLE. I'll make sure it's, it's on the screen somewhere. But make sure you guys use that code to get 20% off from New Air Appliances. Uh, definitely do that if you're looking into a portable AC unit or maybe a mini fridge or something like that. They have all kinds of stuff, so make sure you guys check them out. But uh, yeah, again, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Have an awesome day.